and tainted eyes. Darkness judges my outside. Beyond the label, see the whole picture. We have nothing to hide. We dehumanize with close human eyes. Stereotypes warping you and I. But if you clearly see my humanity, the truth is we are all family. Say something nice and realize We have nothing to hide We dehumanize with close human eyes Stereotypes warping you and I But if you clearly see my humanity The truth is we are all family Cannot wear a hoodie when it's cool. Being Muslim, I get fearful stares bringing backpacks to school. We're seen as a threat and treated as a target. But no time is taken to know who we really are yet. Yes, we are different, but we're mostly the same, though. Our diversity unites us just like a rainbow. Love, respect, respect unity can, can cure this curse. curse. That's, That's why this place is called the universe. We rehumanize, open So music and comedy, you recognize obviously a couple of these guys. How uh, how old are you guys? Trey, how old are you? I'm 17 years 17. old. 17? 19? 21 and five 21. days. 21, five months. <laughs> Still doing the months, I love it. <laughs> uh, so uh, let me ask you a few questions. This is amazing what you've done. I mean, obviously the, the music and the what you're bringing together here. Uh, did you come into the program with any preconceived notions or perceptions about, uh, you know, the different religions or cultures of the different people you're you're working with? Yeah, yeah, I did. I came into the program with like a cutty cutter view of the different religions involved, and I think this is because we as people have the tendency to describe and categorize each other based on our differences rather than our commonalities. And this allows us to stereotype each other. So, for example, in the media today, when people describe Muslims, they solely talk about their religion. And they use words like conservative, traditional, and even horrible words like extremists and terrorists. They paint a whole group with a broad brush, and they totally forget the humanity of every single person in it, their dreams, their talents, their desires. Right. And also, my dad grew up in a conservative church background, so my perspective on traditional religions was what people can and can't do. So this limited perspective, I think, really limited my perspective of all that we really are. Yeah, going into it like that, right? How long have you all been involved with Music at Common? Man, well, this is my first year, and first year. I'm honored to be part of it. Awesome. Um, well, my group met about a year ago, so oh. this is the second year. Second year? Also about a year because my group was with Trace. This thing, Sarah, hold on to the microphone there. What, what challenges did you face uh, when you entered into the program? Well, as a songwriter, musician, and composer, um, it become, like I usually work alone. So when I first heard about music in common, I was kind of worried about how different it would be to write as a group. 
But when my group met with Trey, we actually didn't have the problem of um, other people's ideas being washed out or unheard, and we didn't have the issue of um, not willing to compromise because even though we seemed different at first, we realized that we had a lot more in common and uh, the idea for the song just came really easily. That's awesome. Uh, Trey, what, uh, we're all taught, I think, that uh, you know, re religion, we, religion, culture, all these things that we grow up different, that those are the barriers, actually, between us all. But what, uh, what's it like when you work with someone who has these, this different religious background or cultural background, and you, you see the humanity in, in their eyes as you're doing that, working with them? Yes. It, it is the most righteous and most revealing experience in the world because I learned that within our so-called differences, there are deeper similarities than we could have ever thought. So like with the program, we all came together as a group, we sat down in a circle, and we answered questions like, what pressures do we feel inside and outside of our faith communities? As well as what aspects of our faith do we value the most? And I found myself relating and empathizing with everybody's response. When my friend Sarah, talked about how she'll be afraid as a Muslim to go to school with a backpack because people can perceive her as a terrorist. Like, my heart sunk. Yeah. Because I thought about how myself as an African American can be afraid to wear a hoodie even when it's cold outside <laughs> because people can perceive me as a thug. Right. So we all felt the pain of dehumanization, but we all shared the values of love and peace and unity. And I think that really showed me that we're all the same. Yeah. Did you guys know each other at all before? Any no. of this before music in common? Nah. No. We go way back since like maybe two weeks ago when it first started. So, yeah. <laughs> way way back, old old friends now. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Were there, did you guys? Any of you have any fears or concerns before getting involved? Yeah. All right. Two mostly. The first one being timing. My group met less than a week after the San Bernardino shooting, which, as we all know, Orange County got hit pretty hard by that. I was thinking that maybe the timing wasn't right, and maybe we just needed a break from any religious dialogue. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I was proved wrong, because the song actually gave us a regained sense of hope, if you will. Um, but another fear that I had going into it was my own self-critical one, if you will, uh, my music ability. I was thinking that I wouldn't have enough to offer, that I couldn't add anything to the discussion, make the song good or likable, right. make it worth listening to. I realized about halfway through that the song really isn't the point. The ability and the skill going into the song is not the point. The fact that strangers can come together and have a dialogue about religion, which has always been associated with violence, mm -hmm. and have something peaceful come out, that is entirely the point. Yeah, and big point. How did, uh, how did you get into the program? Um, or why well, did you join? I, I joined mostly because I thought Originally, it would just be a fun way to gain some experience songwriting and producing. I didn't really see the weight that something like this could carry at first. I, all I knew was that music has always been a huge source of positivity in my life, and I think even people that aren't musical, per se, can relate to that. Music always brings people together. Mm -hmm. um, with religion, especially with our generation, you know, I was five years old when 9-11 occurred. Our, our entire life has just been this association of faith and violence and evil. And I think, honestly, I just wanted to be a part of something good and something positive. That's great. That's great. Uh, Sarah, how did the, the process, so you meet, you get together, how did the process of writing the song change your perception? Well, the way it changed my perception was during our discussion because my group found that a recurring topic was dehumanization. Because with all the hate and prejudice going on in the world, it becomes very easy to subject people to stereotypes and generalizations. And then you start to see them through a false lens. And basically, um, we found that this is like, it just uh, creates a barrier between when you meet someone new and you just see them through like, so, yeah, exactly. So, like Trey said, dehumanization became a big um, issue. So, we, didn't wanna, we don't want to live in a world that dehumanizes. We want to live in a world that rehumanizes. And that became the title of our song. And the lyrics just flowed from that discussion. Awesome. Well, obviously, our, uh, our topic today, or our theme, is, is perception. You talk about it changing the theme, or the perception 
uh, of how you look at each other. Did it, did it change behavior at all? I think so. Um, since being in this program, I've always been a person who's very reserved, and I'm kind of in my own head a lot. I find myself more and more talking to strangers, which doesn't seem like a huge revelation necessarily, but there's a lot of weight in finding a person and giving them your attention, giving them empathy, because I think strangers, we only fear them, you know, the, the whole stranger danger concept. We only fear them because we don't know them yet. We haven't given them the chance to not be strangers. And seeing the person in line in front of you or at a table away from you as an obstacle just gives you a chance to be afraid and to not want to engage. The only way or the best way that we can fight prejudice is to just make interpersonal relations more normal. Yeah, what a great approach to make them stop them being a stranger at that point. Uh, do you think anyone, you guys have this incredible story and, and, and song that came out of it, but do you think anyone who would get involved with something like this would, would have a similar story coming out of it? Do you think they'd have the same effect? I do, because once you're surrounded by such honesty and empathy, it becomes very hard to not see the humanity that lies with, within other people. I mean, just being able to connect with each other, and I think being able to see that, you know, a lot of times we can use our differences, of course, you know, as a barrier per se, but being able to see that we really are connected, yeah. you know, it's just so important. And I think it's something that we were all able to really feel. And I think it's something that everybody can really just experience through seeing the humanity between all of us. Right. I mean, I just see you guys and I'm like, oh my God, the three amazing people. Of course, you're going to go through that. But you think even someone, let's say they're, they're closed-minded about something about this, they, if they got involved with something like this, you think they'd end up having the, the same thing? Sarah? Yes. Yes, because um, like, like I said, when you see the humanity in other people, it becomes very hard to like, try to be ignorant to that. Because even if you don't want to, and, like, you just can't avoid that. Because I believe that even if the perception, like the change in perception wasn't uh, like a complete change in opinion, the whole point is just to be able to realize that you should start to feel with other people and you don't have to necessarily agree with them on anything or even anything at all to be able to empathize with them. And uh, to me, that's one of the most important messages to take out from this experience and just in life in general. So that's why the three of us are here to send this message. But it's an awesome message, and obviously uh, we're sending it out today to the to the, the TED people watching at home and here in the audience. Uh, and then obviously the music. That's the great thing about music: reaches the masses, and everyone gets your message. But what about uh, what about maybe the people who are who are high up, the world leaders out there who uh, who could maybe help uh, you know spread this word? Do you have a message for them, uh, the people up in charge there, Dre? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But it's a positive one, though. Good. <laughs> <laughs> We're G-rated. Yes, think. We're yes, gonna... <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King said that people hate each other because they fear each other. And people fear each other because they don't know each other. And I think that's a really good testimony and example for why there's a lot of hate in the world today, because there's so much hate, so much fear, so much ignorance, especially in this country currently, because we haven't had the chance to really get to know one another, empathize with one another face to face. And that's why music in common is so great, because it brings together people who normally would not ever meet, and they're able to create a song for peace. And I really think that we as a world can become that, because if an Arab American Muslim, an African American Christian, and an American Jew can make a song together about peace, <laughs> we as a world can really do that. There's no us and them. It's just us. Well put, well put. Music in common, Trey, Aria, and Sarah. Thank you guys so much.